November 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Daniel chapter 10 from the Old Testament. In the third year of King Cyrus of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, who was also called Belshazzar. This message was true and concerned a great war. He understood the message and gained insight by the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three whole weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine came to my lips, nor did I anoint myself with oil until the end of those three weeks. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month I was beside the great river, the Tigris. I looked up and saw a man clothed in linen. Around his waist was a belt made of gold from Upaz. His body resembled yellow jasper, and his face had an appearance like lightning. His eyes were like blazing torches, his arms and feet had the gleam of polished bronze. His voice thundered forth like the sound of a large crowd. Only I, Daniel, saw the vision. The men who were with me did not see it. On the contrary, they were overcome with fright and ran away to hide. I alone was left to see this great vision. My strength drained from me and my vigor disappeared. I was without energy. I listened to his voice, and as I did so I fell into a trance-like sleep with my face to the ground. Then a hand touched me and set me on my hands and knees. He said to me, Daniel, you are of great value. Understand the words that I am about to speak to you. So stand up, for I have now been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up shaking. Then he said to me, Don't be afraid, Daniel. For from the very first day you applied your mind to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I have come in response to your words. However, the prince of the kingdom of Persia was opposing me for twenty-one days, but Michael, one of the leading princes, came to help me because I was left there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to help you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision pertains to future days. While he was saying this to me, I was flat on the ground and unable to speak. Then one who appeared to be a human being was touching my lips. I opened my mouth and started to speak, saying to the one who was standing before me, Sir, due to the vision, anxiety has gripped me and I have no strength. How, sir, am I able to speak with you? My strength is gone and I am breathless. Then the one who appeared to be a human being touched me again and strengthened me. He said to me, Don't be afraid, you who are valued. Peace be to you, be strong. Be really strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened. I said, Sir, you may speak now, for you have given me strength. He said, Do you know why I have come to you? Now I am about to return to engage in battle with the Prince of Persia. When I go, the Prince of Greece is coming. However, I will first tell you what is written in a dependable book. There is no one who strengthens me against these princes except Michael, your prince. God, we have a worldly view of angels. You know, I was laughing. A friend of mine was just posting some angels that are getting ready to put up on their church for Christmas decorations. And, you know, they're pretty and white and have wings and halos. <laughs> and I teasingly wrote underneath the caption of the photo, I said, where are the other four wings and all the eyeballs? <laughs> because we don't, we don't see angels the way that they are written in the Bible, uh, for the most part, not in our culture. And so we tend not to give them a lot of intentional thought not only how they look, but more importantly in this chapter, uh, what they do for you. Uh, obviously, number one, they worship and glorify you. Uh, that is incredibly clear. Two, they come in a lot of different forms. We know some have six wings and eyeballs. We know other ones come in the form of looking a little bit like a human being, uh, but with attributes unlike anything that a human being has, and, and obviously presence unlike anything that a human being would have. Uh, and there's different variations in the Bible of how these angels show up. But in relationship to us, a lot of people are like, oh, I, I pray that my guardian angel does X, Y, and Z. And that may not be so completely far off 
um, how we say it probably is, but the idea of you sending in angels to watch over us is very clear. Right here, it's talking about uh, an angel coming in, sent to Daniel, saying, gosh, I, I'm here to help you. I'm so sorry I was late. I was helping somebody else. Um, we're in a huge fight with the king of Persia, uh, who is doing all this evil stuff, who's being controlled by Satan. And we're in a fight, and it was only because another... Uh, angel Michael came to help me am I able to come to you and now I have to go back to another fight and so we know that you send your angels to come and help in this incredible battle that we're in seen and unseen and I think it's the unseen part that again we don't give a lot of intentional thought to of what is constantly going on that is not visible to our eyes um, and because it's not visible to our eyes we tend to not give it much thought or we Put poofy little angels up at Christmas time, and that's the extent of thought that we give them. But how incredible, God, that you send uh, your messengers to us in our lives uh, to fight those battles. It it leads me to believe, after reading all I have about angels and and what they do for you and what they do for us, that. I'm guessing without their help, we probably wouldn't be able to be in some of the battles that we are, um, that you sent them to strengthen us uh, through you. And some of the battles that are being waged on our lives uh, are so incredibly violent and so intentional and so evil uh, that I know just hanging out on our own, we wouldn't have been able to do it. It's only with your grace and your mercy and sending in the uh, strengthening power of your angels have we been able to overcome those things. And, you know, what an incredible reminder that you are always there, that, that yes, we will be persecuted. Uh, and ultimately, that's for your glory as well. But we will be persecuted. But knowing full well that you are always there with us and always ready to send in the angel armies to, to rescue us, to stop whatever's happening, uh, to help fight that battle uh, with us and for us. Uh, and again, we probably have no idea how many times uh, we have been in an incredibly serious battle with, with angels fighting for us because we've never seen it. I'm sure if some of us stop for a second and think, we probably have felt it. Uh, but it's something, again, unseen, so we don't give it a lot of uh, thought process in our regular life. God, I thank you for loving us so much that you strengthen us. You, you have angels that come in and help us and fight battles for us. In all of these ways that protect your people. God, I know that our life and what we go through, the ups and downs, is all for your glory. Everything in this world is for your glory. Um, and I thank you so much for lessening some of those blows that we have to deal with uh, through your angels that you send in to protect us. God, I am barely skimming the surface of understanding how much you truly love us. But every time I, I understand more and more, it just overwhelms me and floods me with emotions of how much you take care of us day in and day out. I, I imagine my life today as I walk through today and, and I think everything goes just fine. You know, I arrived at my destinations just fine. You know, I had great meetings with my discipleship partners. I did this, I did this. Without even a second thought of all the things that you actually protected me from during the day, I posted a quote from one of my favorite favorite authors and one of my favorite preachers, uh, John Piper. Um, and I just posted this uh, up on Facebook today and it said that God is always doing 10,000 things in your life and you may be aware of three of them. God, allow my worship and praise to you today to be more intentional of understanding that you are doing 10,000 plus things in my life constantly to protect me, to guide me, to teach me, uh, to love me, to show me grace. Allow me to be more intentional and aware of those things because once I am more aware of them, then it also means that I can love other people with that same awareness. Thank you for all that you do in my life. Thank you for all the things that I don't understand that you do in my life. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.